Can you no, believe I'm that? sure that my mom was given different kind of a thing about me when I was coming up. And had it happened, I said, we wouldn't be here, Sean. That's all. Okay. People say, well, how would you feel? I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel nothing. I wouldn't be here. Okay. Uh, and I would be one of the quadrillions, maybe more of human beings who never make it. Cause that's what you and I both know. When your scrotum is filled with a lot of, uh, sperm, there's at least a couple of hundred sperm back there who never get to make a human being. So if you're alive, you mean you're like Correct. maybe a half percent or one percent of all the human beings who could, could ever exist. I have a joke. I have a joke for that. I hope I can tell it on your, on your. Go ahead. Cause, you know, the head coach of the sperms, uh, announced one day, look, there's going to be an egg available in about 30 days. So y'all get ready, sir. So the middle sperm went back and he rested, but one sperm said, uh-uh, I'm going to be ready. So he worked out. He lifted, pumped iron. He did ab stuff. He ran all that. And for 30 days, he just worked out. So when the day came for the egg to appear, he was ready. The other million weren't. So the sperm coat shot the uh, starting gun and they started running. But the guy who'd been worked out, he zipped out like, oh, he's done a million miles an hour. So the rest of the brethren said, well, what the fuck? I mean, we may not even try. He's going to get it, right? They turn around to go back. And then they hear somebody say, hold on. It's a blue job. It's a blue job. <laughs> I didn't see the end of that joke coming. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I know I'm being nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> no, I love it, man. I love it. That's hilarious. Oh, you know, you know what what I didn't know, I didn't realize you didn't start off as a comedian. I'm not, you I'm, not I'm, say, I'm not a comedian. I know people have that impression, but if you talk to my ex wife, she will tell you what she used to tell me anyway. She would say, Negro, you ain't funny. Well, she wouldn't use the, she used the other N word, right? I am a guy who was in a funny show, uh, many years ago called Saturday Night Live. And I have been suffering yes. ever since, John. Cause everywhere I go, people want me to be funny. And like I said, my ex wife will tell you I'm not. No, I am. A guy who started off as a singer, composer, singer, arranger with Harry Belafonte. I was always intending to be in acting and writing. Okay. So once after six months, Harry's job was about six months each year. The other six months, I would do an off Broadway show and a couple of times maybe work, work two plays, both of which were produced in New York. But I, by the time Saturday Night Live discovered me, I've been in the business 17 years and I had at least 20, 25 plays on and off Broadway. Uh, one of which was In Supposed to Die Natural Death, Nothing Pupils, uh, play. Um, so by the time Saturday Night Live, you know, discovered me and made people think I was a comedian. Matter of fact, I was hired as a writer on SML, not as a comedian, hired as a writer. Um, because Lord Michael had read one of the plays I wrote and saw something funny in it. But by the time um, I got to Saturday Night Live, I had already done acting, drama, you know. Uh, I had written two plays. I had, um, with Harry Belafonte, I had at least four or five things I arranged and composed. If, if Lawson Gould publishes are still around, my arrangements and compositions are with them right now. So by the time I sat down live, and I had also taught public school on the, on the Low East Side. I had about a year of teaching, um, you know, um, and it was in the ghetto. Matter of fact, uh, just to digress, when I did uh, Cooley High, which was about a black teacher in the ghetto teaching, you know, children in depressed area, uh, area of the city. I was all, I was doing that on the Lower East Side, which would 
to make it mysterious as to why when Michael Schutz tried to cast me in the role of a black teacher teaching in a depressed area, the producer said, no, we don't want it. Yeah. Did they know your background? Whatever. I don't know if they did. I do know that they told Michael Schultz they wanted a um, T.D. Poitier type because they had seen To Serve to Serve Love. You ever seen that movie To Serve with Love? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so that's what they wanted, right? And Michael had to take me into the lady's office and convince her to let me play the role, which, as I look back, is one of the best things I ever did. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.